name is Tom Seven, and this is the second in my series of videos, I guess, on Learn Fun and Play Fun, which is a pair of pieces of software I wrote to automate the playing of Nintendo games. And uh, if you haven't watched the first video, you should watch that one first. It explains the basics, and I'm not going to cover that in this video. This video mostly consists of um, more gameplay with commentary to try to liven it up. Um, that first video became unexpectedly popular, and it was really just a research presentation for the Sigbovic conference. This one is made for the YouTube audience, so I'm going to take the advice, the piece of number one feedback that I got from everyone, including my friends, which was shut the hell up and get on with the video game stuff. Before I do that though, there's a couple frequently asked questions. I read all the comments, which some of which were very mean, and you should feel bad about that, but some of them are worth addressing here. So first, this is work that is real. Um, the software is real, it's not a joke. It came out on April Fools because Sigbovic is on April Fools every year. It's a sort of whimsical conference. But many things, as you should know, um, that happen on April Fools Day are in fact real. This is one of them. And you can find the source code on the website, tom7.org slash Mario. And now I just put up the binary so you can download for Windows 64-bit windows. You can download it and run it yourself if you have enough RAM to do so. Um, but in any case, like, just watch. It's real. Two, let me check my notes here. Ah, Skynet. You don't need to worry about this thing taking over. I assure you that uh, the techniques used here are harmless um, unless we're all living inside a Nintendo game, which could be true, but I think we would look a little mo bit more pixely or something like that, which would maybe be pretty cool. Three, check in the notes. Uh, the stock market. This cannot be used to uh, solve the stock market or anything like that. In fact, I'll show you some direct evidence of that fact um, in this video. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you, I think, 13 new games, and this is played with the exact same settings that I showed in the previous video. I haven't modified the program at all. And the point here is to demonstrate sort of the generality of this approach. Because uh, actually another frequent comment here is like, how is this any better than an AI for Counter-Strike or for Mario? And this is a general AI. Um, all it needs to do is watch me play the game for about a minute, and then it can do this. However, this is sometimes not so good, as you'll see um, in, the, in the video, which is coming up now. Where we last left our hero, it had paused a game of Tetris right when it was about to lose. Uh, and just stay there paused forever, which seemed kind of clever at the time. But I wanted to show you the dark side of pausing. The Legend of Zelda is literally legendary. But this gameplay is not legendary. So while my program tries to type its name in here, let me tell you about those pictures up on the top right. Each one represents the Ness's memory, and each pixel is a byte in the memory. And the color represents whether the program thinks it's doing well at that given time based on that particular byte in memory. So let me show you that again. And the thing I think is interesting about this is the pixels are mostly green during the time that it's moving its cursor across those A's, but when then it gets to the last A, it gets red. You just saw it get red there because it's sort of sad. So green is happy, red is sad, and here it, it seems to think the purpose of the game is to just move the cursor across, and then when it gets to the end and it can't go any further, it has to wrap around, it gets sad. And eventually it realizes that there's some other way by typing in this third one that makes it very happy. You can see all that green. And then the game finally begins. And now get used to this. Link really likes checking that menu, checking to see if he's got any more Triforce pieces since one second ago. Nope. And it makes him very happy. You can see up on the graphs a lot of green and then sad when it comes back down. Nope, still no Triforce. And here he goes off with no sword, though it's dangerous to go alone. A little confident. That's a pretty cool move. You get a little faster if you let that guy shoot you in the back. It's not a sustainable strategy, but you know, I mean, he's kind of, kind of going. No more Triforce. Still not there. Let me basically speed this up for you here. So I didn't really expect it to do well on Zelda because it, you got to go all around. You got to have a map. You know, like Nintendo Power, it's got to help you out on this game. But this was really sad to me, so now we have to go on to a game that works well. And I'm happy to say we don't need to go too deep into the library. Punch out, it works. And we got a whole bunch of new jazz going on on the screen here, so... In the top right we have just the history of those green and red and blue, which is neutral. Uh, so how many bytes are good, how many bytes are sad, how many bytes are not changed. 
And on the bottom right, we have the history of each individual objective function, which is a different color over time. So the purple there might represent the score, which you can see is going up, um, or some combination of the score and the time. And these are the objective functions that learn fun learned, and that play fun is trying to find a sequence of inputs to optimize. And so that's what it's doing. And it's doing okay here against this guy whose name is Glass Joe. Glass Joe is famous for his glass jaw, which is made of like tempered glass, which is why you can punch him a hundred times in the face. And he's like still, still fine. He's fine. But little Mac here is pretty soon, as soon as he punches him in the face. So all you gotta do is punch him in the face. His jaw is made of glass. Uh, we'll dispatch this foe. There you go. Down for the count. Actually, he's got to knock him down three times, but here he is just creaming him with star punches. Down again. Bam. Star. Oh. Took his time. The round ends with like a tiny bit of health left. So here's how it goes. Good dish. Okay. Some stars. Just throw a star punch. Oh. What are you doing? You have three stars. Okay, whatever. And... Uh, okay, technical knockout. Down three times the same round. On to the next. So this guy is called Von Kaiser. And his jaw is made of Kaiser Roll. So it's extra soft. And... God, he loves stars. Even though you can only have a maximum of three, he just stocks up. Maybe those give you the most points or something. And... good Kapow. Too slow. But he does eventually end Kaiser's career with this brutal knockout. He's going to the hospital for sure. Then the title bout versus Piston Honda. This guy's jaw is made of just regular bone, but his eyes are made of pistons. Watch his eyes, hold on. Oh, did you see that? Only pistons could make eyes do that. So here we go, and he does this special move here. Yeah. Alright. Actually, maybe his fist is a piston. Fiston Honda. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Fiston Handa. So, portions not affecting the outcome here have been edited out. Uh, it mostly looks like this. It does pretty well, at least for the first couple guys. And, um, here's... This is one of my favorite parts right here. One. Two. Three. Four. And that's a TKO. Then he waits on this screen, pressing every button but start for about a minute and a half. Then Coach plays a little trick and runs off with your bike. Gotta try to catch him. Then this handsome gentleman, Don Flamenco. He's super passive. He'll not throw a punch unless you throw a punch. And he just barks at you and waves his fists up and down like this. But, uh, little Max hip to his game here. And he'll throw a punch sometimes and kind of just goes on like this. Here's round two, beginning. Same song and dance. It's like symbolic, you know? Like, what is boxing? And here we are at the end of the round. He's thrown a total of ten punches in the whole bout. And then with one second left, he eats boxing floor or whatever. He didn't learn how to press the buttons. All you have to do is just spam the buttons to get up. I didn't, I didn't like teach him how to do that, I guess. Alright, Don Flamenco, you win this round. And Little Mac is definitely more aggressive the second time through. Grab him some stars. Maybe making him eat boxing floor a little bit. And then here's the epic uh, pay-per-view ending. Four seconds left in the whole bout. 
eats boxing floor. But what? Oh, gets back up with two seconds to spare. And then, of course, the bout's over immediately. And by decision, the winner is Defender, which is that guy, I guess. So, Coach and I decide we'll turn in the towel. That's it. No more boxing. But he didn't say I couldn't do drugs or throw drugs into this bottle on these viruses. And uh, this is Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario, little known fact, actually, is, is a PhD, not an MD. It's a PhD in herpetology, which is the study of reptiles, not like an actual illness that you might treat with... Valtrex or another antiviral. So he's pretty useless at this. I mean, he's not got any of these viruses dead. He's like packing the pills around the viruses, but that doesn't help very much. And this game is basically Tetris. It's kind of a worse version of Tetris. Um, and here you see this that old pausing strategy. It seems to maybe be helping here, and one of the reasons why it might be helping is that the game decides what uh, pill you get next based on a random number generator. The random number generator has to work based on what you're sending it uh, in terms of inputs in the game. Otherwise you'd always get the same series of pills. And so sometimes pausing can actually get, mean you get a different pill. We'll see some more examples of that later. But there goes Dr. Mario, stripped of his license, and tries over again. But this is garbage, we don't want to watch this anymore. By the way, I painstakingly drew a Nintendo controller on the bottom left, so you can see that it is not entering the Konami code. It was just sitting there. I knew you'd, I knew you'd wonder, but confidence. Three lives is all anyone should need. So this is a game that is of the kind that PlayFun can do pretty well. It's one of those where you just have to go to the right, you happen to have a gun, um, and you have to not do that. But, as we know, PlayFund is not very bashful about losing its lives. It will only really get stressed out about dying when death, like, is the end of the game. Um, otherwise, it just seems like a minor setback, like it warps to the top left of the screen, because it, it doesn't care about bites going down, again, only bites going up. So, yep, don't want fire, that's garbage. Those machine gun skills are something else, huh? Sometimes they'll just, like, jump into a dude and fire a bullet at the very last second. Here, I think it is actually stuck on a kind of seam. And what I mean by that is the screens in a level don't always go up like screen number four, screen number five, screen number six. So I think there's some kind of discontinuity right there, because I don't understand why it won't just go to the right. And as soon as it gets past this part, it's fine again. Anyway, we have to hold on. I'm going to show you all of Contra, so that's a little spoiler about how this ends. Yes, spread. Get it. Get it. Ah, oh, now spread is the best gun. If you have spread, you just press the, the shoot button and you kill everybody. Because look, it shoots everybody on the screen at once. Don't, don't get laser. Oh. As cool as laser sounds like it would be, it's the worst. It was actually literally manufactured by the Nerf company. They make lasers for war. Uh, for safe war. So there's some pausing in this part. I just skipped literally two minutes of it for you. Just waiting there for the moment to strike. Which is not, not yet. All right. Yeah, shoot, shoot the glowing thing. You always shoot the glowing thing. And here's blue guy's farewell. Those bullets are inescapable. Oh, and he pauses with the bullet like so close to him. You can't even see it, it's inside his body but it hasn't yet pierced his heart. And this is a game called Wall Street Kid. And remember, this is made in the 80s, so in those days it was cool to be really douchey. And basically this is the intro that this lawyer is telling you that you just inherited a bunch of money. If you can double your $500,000 in one month, then you get the whole inheritance. And, which is ridiculous, of course. But people wanted to see how PlayFun did on the stock market, so this is this is how it does. And here you have, using our lesson from before, see so he says, have a great April Fool's Day, but remember everything I told you is no April Fool's joke. Just like this software. 
By the way, this is the most boring game I've ever played. Basically, you read the Hot Stocks Bulletin, headliners, and so forth. You get some phone calls from your agent. It's like there's nothing fun in this game at all. So, in this game, you control that little arrow, which you can drive around and click on flowers or whatever. We get off to an auspicious start. Immediately goes to buy, which is what you have to do in order to you just buy 6,000 lots, each 100 shares of AT&T. No? Okay, how about 4,000 and 2. It's telling you right here, 8 max. So, we're off by a couple thousand. And it spends some time on this screen trying to buy way, way too many stocks and then fails to do that. And then watch these expert cursor skills. This is what I imagine, like, life and finance is like. Just trying to decide, should I read the paper or should I touch the computer? So days go by like this, reading headlines like, Speculative and growth stocks climb while others fall. That's like a real headline in this game. And finally it decides that cash might be too conservative of a strategy to double its money in a month. So it's going to buy some Marriott here. How about zero lots? Whoa. It just bought eight, the maximum. So now it has 472000 invested in the hotel chain. Mary not. Fast forwards time. Loses money on that deal. Loses money again the next day. Then uh, drowns his sorrows in dog shopping. Which is super weird. What is this? Loses another 8,000 on the 10th. And on the 11th. And the 13th. And then your agent calls you up and he's like, Hey, don't forget that one million dollars tomorrow for this house we're buying. And, you know, if this game, if it became like a heist game, that would be awesome. But it's actually just, you don't have enough cash and you lose the game. And the lawyer is very disappointed in you. Nice work, play fun. So in the 80s, we also had a lot of xenophobia. In particular, Russians, they were like, all bad, right? So in this game, my mission is to destroy the enemy's secret weapon in Russia. They just helicoptered me in or something. And all they give me is a knife. But PlayFun isn't having it. He doesn't even want to use the knife a little bit. Just test it out. Russian attack. Now, <laughs> he finds this spot in this ladder and just hangs out there for quite a while. Enemies just passing him by. Their heads go like between his legs, they don't notice. This is like a safe spot. Basically, he's like waiting for the Cold War to end. Because he knows, you know, he can see the future. The wall's coming down soon. This is like detente. Good dish. That's a little bit more of the same. This is gonna get better pretty soon. I don't know what what comes over him. Here's this ladder again. And finally some kind of bloodlust snaps within our hero. Yeah. Now these are landmines. 
So you gotta jump over those. They're helpfully glowing so that you don't miss them. And they also don't go off on Russians. Ready for a jumping stab to the face? It's gross. Here's another cool move. Oh, boom, boom. Now watch him stab these guys. You don't even see the knife, it comes out so fast. And what is this? You can't jump on a guy's head and kill him? And Playfun gets stabbier and stabbier as time goes on here. Which is cool. It's a good strategy. Then here's the boss fight. I skipped a bunch of stuff in this level. It's kind of repetitive. But this is pretty great. It's like, I'm just gonna stand here and spin with my knife. And if Russians walk into it, that's their own fault. Okay. Now, I can't even tell if he's climbing into or out of a base here. In this level, you're like fighting blind guys, I think. But he eats airstrip floor here. Sorry. Watch this advanced stabbing technique. And a few minutes later, this surprise jump kick to the face, and it's all over for USA. Oh wait, one more life. Well, he gets him that time. One of the nice things about Nintendo is that the enemy AI is always worse than my AI. So watch, jumps over, and then, like the guy just keeps on running, stabs him in the back of the neck. But they win in the end. Playfun will often restart a game on its own, and it does in this case. Uh, we're not going to watch it again. But what is this? I just realized on the menu there's a gun, but I only get a I only get a knife. 